Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Parish. Our celebrant today is Father Mark, assisted by Deacon John. Today is the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Lord Jesus reminds us in our Gospel reading that we are called to respect and serve the small and the lowly. With humble and contrite hearts, let us take a moment of silent prayer to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred liturgy. Please stand. Let us ever glory in the cross of Christ, our salvation and our hope. Let us bow in homage to the Lord of life, who was broken to make us whole. There is no greater love, as blessed as this, to lay down one's life for a friend. Let us ever glory in the cross of Christ and the triumph of God's great love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus calls us to take up our cross and follow him, to live in a way pleasing to God. He offers us his body and blood as food to strengthen us for a life of love and service, so that we may be conformed not to the world, but to him who is our life. Lord Jesus, compassionate one, you are good and forgiving to all who call on you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, living water, you are refreshment for the thirsty soul. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Risen Lord, your love is better than life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. 
but then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul soul is is thirsting thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts, like the earth, parched, lifeless, and without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord Lord, my my God. God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet, shall my soul be satisfied. And with exultant lips, my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, You O Lord Lord my my God. God. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. My soul is thirsting for for you, you, O Lord Lord my my God. God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. heart and on your lips, proclaim this gospel worthily and well, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly, and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are not thinking, you are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Good evening, St. Paul. And good evening to our folks that are watching on YouTube. Uh, We miss you. We really, really miss you. Um, We do have openings at Mass, so um, if if you'd like to come back at some point and and, uh, experience a liturgy, a very socially distant liturgy, um, we're all wearing masks and and, and face shields and using a lot of hand sanitizer in here. Um, but we would love to see, uh, see your face. So um, if not, we understand. We know that these are difficult times, but just please know that we, we genuinely miss you. Um, Jesus tells us today to pick up our cross and carry it and follow him. Pick up your cross and carry it, and follow him. I think we attach a lot of different meanings to this in our life when we think of carrying a cross. I think sometimes we just kind of throw that analogy on to to anything. Um, When I broke my back, I used that word a lot. I'm carrying my cross, except I'm not. I'm actually laying in bed in a lot of pain. I'm not really carrying it. I'm laying down with it. We attach it to a lot of things. But to go back to the really what the biblical meaning when Jesus says, carry your cross, it involves a choice. It's something very profound. Something a little bit more than maybe our our normal everyday aches and pains and our normal everyday uh, anxieties that we face in life. It it's about something very, very profound that, that really speaks to your God-given purpose. Every one of us has a God-given purpose. Certainly, we're all given the God-given purpose of being his disciples, of following him. As he says, pick up your cross and follow me. But there are times in our lives when we make, when we are faced with a choice, when you have to make a very, very deliberate choice that you know is going to be a painful choice, but you choose it anyways because it has something to do with your God-given purpose. And sometimes we don't even recognize up front that the choice we're making is going to be a very challenging one. I, I look to, you know, some of our, our couples sometimes that are getting ready for marriage and they're in love and, and they're excited about one another, but they haven't really experienced yet the totality of what marriage means. You don't have to raise your hand. It just maybe nod a little bit if that, if that relates, if, if, It's a deliberate choice. You know, I was, I was faced with this choice a long time ago. And all of a sudden, I'm in college, studying to be a geologist, and it was like I felt this spiritual tapping on the shoulder. Hey, hey you, I have something else in mind for you. Go away, God. God. I'm going to be a geologist. I'm having a lot of fun looking at these rocks. Hey, you, I got something else in mind for you. It's always an invitation. God's purpose in your life isn't something that's forced on you. It's an invitation that you can say yes to or you can say no to. So I took him up on that invitation. I said, okay, I'll think about this priesthood thing. I'll think about that. And I found myself going on this crazy adventure. But boy, did it. It, it, it definitely came with some, some, some definite suffering along the way. I remember having a conversation with a family member. I'm going to be really vague here because this is going on YouTube. 
<laughs> very, very vague, with a family member. And I was on the phone with my family member, and my family member, who really didn't understand this calling to the priesthood thing, says to me, you know, I think you need just just drop that. Just don't even think about that. You know, go off and, and do something like your dad was doing, work with your hands. My dad was a tool man. He sold tools. That, that, that's what you should be doing. And, and I'm having this conversation. I'm feeling, because I was all excited. I'm like, I'm telling my family members now, they should all be really excited for me. And, and most of them were. And then I, all of a sudden, I come across one who really is not excited at all. And so we had a little back and forth over the phone. And we agreed to disagree on it. But I got to tell you, my family member is one of the nicest people that I know in life. And to this day, he's the kind of person who would give you the shirt right off of his back, even if it was his only shirt. And I love him. And I can say, as someone now who has followed the path of priesthood for over 16 years, that I look back and I am glad he challenged me. I'm happy he did. Because think about it, the most profound, important choices that you make in your life, if they are not in some way challenged, then do you really appreciate the choice that you made? I was challenged. I was definitely challenged. But because I was challenged, it gave me the opportunity to to really examine and say, God, you know, you tapped me on the shoulder about this. Is this really what you have in mind? Is this really what you want me to do? And I had to answer that question again. And this time, when I, when I said yes, after having this conversation with my family member, boy, it was a very deliberate yes. Sometimes our choices come with suffering. But sometimes that suffering is what validates our choices. So here are the disciples. Now, keep in mind, last week we had the reading. You remember this. Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom. Here they are, Peter. You were the one who said that I'm the Christ. You're the one who who looked through all of the things that people were saying about me and you saw to the heart of who I was. Here are the keys. And, And this gospel today is the tail end of that conversation. This is happening right after that. And right after Peter is told, you are the rock, you're the one I'm going to build my church on, and so here's what I'm going to have to go through, Peter. And then he tells him about having to go and die and suffer and, and, and all of that. And Peter's like, no! No! That's, no, that's nonsense, Jesus. Jesus was challenged on what his purpose was. Jesus didn't hate Peter. Jesus didn't despise Peter because Peter challenged him on this. He did correct him. He's, he, in, a very, in a very vocal way, he literally said, get behind me, Satan. And think about that. Your friend, who you just challenged, looks at you and says, get behind me, Satan. That's what he said to Peter, the rock on whom he's going to build his church. Because he knew Peter better than that. He knew that Peter's own choice, Peter's own deliberate choice to say yes to the Lord had not yet been challenged or tested. And it would be. Oh boy, would Peter's 
yes, be tested. Sometimes our yes needs to be tested. Your yes to God's plan in your life should at some level go through some kind of a test so that at the end of that test, after you have held firm to your yes to God, you just, you know how devoted your answer and response to God was. How has life tested your God-given purpose? Think about those moments when you had to make sense of your yes, maybe defend it. The disciples had to do that. We've read the Acts of the Apostles. We we know what their, their lives were went through. All of, all of the apostles, all the disciples were tested. The early Christians suffered greatly for their yes. How have you been tested for yours? I believe in God. God, Father Almighty, maker maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ. the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God God from God, light from light, true God God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with with the the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, trusting that God knows both our desires and our needs, we bring our prayers to our loving God. For the leaders of the church, that they will be conformed to the radiant image of the Son of God and inspire the faithful to offer their lives in the service of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, for all those who are suffering from the effects of violence, that they may receive God's peace and the strength to rebuild their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters affected by the hurricane this past week, May they feel the presence of the Lord in their time of distress. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are discerning God's call to the priesthood, religious life, and for those who are already serving in priestly ministry, for the Diocese of Joliet that will be given an abundance of good and faithful priests, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater respect for the dignity of all human life from natural conception to natural death, for an end to abortion, the death penalty, euthanasia, poverty, and war, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all those who labor to support their families, that they will be given the grace to persevere in their work. For all those who struggle to find employment, that they will be given the gift of meaningful work, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick or suffering in any way, that the healing love of the Holy Spirit may return them to good health, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that we might grow stronger in our families and always persevere in our daily prayer. For all the members of our families and for all the members of our parish, for all the intentions written in our book of prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Betty Green, that they will rest eternally with God in his heavenly kingdom. For their grieving families, that they will find peace and consolation in the Lord our God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, the people of St. Paul the Apostle Parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful Father, you are the creator of all life. We ask you to hear our prayers, to guide us, and to watch over us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you would follow me, follow where life will lead. Do not look for me among the dead, for I am hidden in pain, risen in love. There is no harvest without sowing of grain. All that is hidden will be made clear. All that is dark now will be revealed. What you have heard in the dark, proclaim in the light. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. Country nights, Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me of my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all that you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Richard, our apostolic administrator, Ronald, our newly appointed bishop, Daniel, our retired bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, lay the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ. Body of Christ.
The body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord. Thirsting for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord. Thirsting for you, my God. Thirsting for you, my God. Body of Christ. Oh God, you are my God. Blessings of Christ be upon you always. always praise you. In the shadow of your wings I cling to you. And you hold me high. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord. The body of Christ. Thirsting body for Christ. you, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord. Thirsting for you, body of Christ. my God. Thirsting for the body you, of Christ. my God. The body of Christ. Body Till of Christ. the day you walk with the body me. of Christ. All the night your love surrounds me. To the glory the of, of your name I lift my hands. I the sing body of your Christ. praise. The body of Christ. My soul is thirsting body for of Christ. you, O oh Lord. The body thirsting of for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord. Thirsting for you, my God. Thirsting for you, my God. I will the body never of Christ. be afraid. The body of Christ. For I will not be abandoned. The body of Christ. Even when the, the road grows long and weary, your love will rescue me. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord. Thirsting for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord. Thirsting for you, my God. Thirsting for you, my God. Oh God, you are my God. And I will always praise you. In the shadow of your wings I cling to you. And you hold me high. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord, thirsting for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord, thirsting for you, my God, thirsting for you, my God. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts 
and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcements today. Uh, registration for religious education is open. Current families should have received registration material in the mail. If you did not receive it or you would like more information, please call the Religious Education Office for more information. Due to the virus, we have decided to move towards an at-home-based program. This will include a 30-minute session each Monday with your child's family shepherd catechist, as well as weekly family videos that will be produced by me, the DRE, and an assortment of other voices as well. Um, we have some great ideas to, to make this great program for our children and families. Also, we are looking for a part-time maintenance worker to join our amazing team. The normal hours are from Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Duties may include repairs and maintenance throughout the facility, as well as lawn and grounds care. Some cleaning and sanitizing duties may be requested. Flexible hours in the winter will be needed uh, for the snow and ice uh, removal. Please contact the maintenance office for more information. So if you're interested in that, or maybe you, you know somebody who might be interested in that, uh, please pass on that, that information. We're, we're looking to hire somebody. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.